you guys are doing great okay so welcome um happy 44 anniversary to zimbabwe yesterday was such an interesting day mixed emotions i saw social media going wild because of um what is going down in zimbabwe that's what we're going to be discussing now and also looking at nosu chamisa who's ready to launch his new party oh my god <laughs> do you think that he just shares um you know Nume, wende shavangu and Matel? we're going to be looking at that tonight what a beautiful day come up everybody now here's the thing if it's your first time to come across this channel i'm going to ask you to subscribe make sure that you ring the bell it's very important so that every time i'm live you'll be notified immediately and i send out some love and shout out to everyone who's always joining us all the time when we live that you're so important i also want to say special shout out to moses good to see you <laughs> ambassador of peace <laughs> so good to see you and don't forget to like the live so that we push algorithm and invite everyone to come through. I'm Sammy. Very, very interesting days ahead. James again. Bra Mike. Uh, Sorofina. Willard. Shout out. All right. So Lawrence as well. Fafi. Good to see you. So guys, why other people are joining in? Today is Friday. So Friday is an interesting day. Um, but um, I'm here for you just to dine with you. <laughs> the new part is ready. We're just waiting for the colors. Yesterday, people were asking Chamisa and said, you've got a green color behind you. Is that the color of the party? Remember, when you wanted to... In and raw blue can i tell you i'd already bought um you know <laughs> regalia to my surprise and i saw that zanpi was not suing chamisa for the color no they are they're cronies um uh, you know and his name was blessed so yeah quick up everybody to rumi and says good to see you <laughs> okay while well, we're preparing we're almost here aren't we I don't know which house to tell you to drop. You have to drop some love. Because I don't know the color yet, you know. I'm sure we should be knowing that in the next few weeks or so. We don't know what color to play around with, y'all. Zimbabwe Coco, all right? that this is going to be like the, the song that we're going to play as a theme, you know? Like, <laughs> whether the devil like it or not, yo, we're going to get in. <laughs> we are not, we are not folding at all. We're going to get in. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, Ziawa, right, Ziawa. Okay, so the definition of foolishness. Dr. Rush, he said definition of foolishness is knowing the truth, seeing evidence of the truth, but still believing in a lie. You know the truth? You see evidence of the truth, but you decide to believe in a lie. <laughs> That's the definition of stupidity. His Excellency President Emerson Nangagwa, um, you know, today actually attended the funeral. You know, um, Isaac Moyo, you know, the ambassador Isaac Moyo, his daughter passed away in Ireland. And I told you last time that they were literally, uh, you know, uh, you know, having a go find me so they're going to repatriate her body to Zimbabwe, which flabbergasted me considering the father holding such a high rank in the government, which I think it was like 
whatever happens, the government is in and as assist. But we, we all know that we seem to be running short of cash. We are sitting with a lot of debts. I actually heard that China kind of tried to assist us, which doesn't really make a lot of sense. Uh, we're going to be looking at that each story tonight a little bit later on. But uh, so let's, let's just a listen, a look at some of the... Um, a statement that the president, Mr. Manangago, said while he was a little reading his speech. So he said, our gathering here must therefore serve, a rem serve as a reminder that despair, um, despite our differences in language, culture, traditions, despite of where we live in the four corners of Zimbabwe, we are one people, one unitary and united nation which, with one rich and illustrious history. Tiri nyika imuchete, tiri manu mamuchete, si ilizwe linye, we remain united, living in peace and harmony, developing our country, emboldened by our philosophy that Nika ino vakwa, ino tongwa, ino na matirwa, neve nevayo. Ilizwe, lakiwa, libuswe, likule kerwe, ngava nikazi valo, President Emerson Munangago. You know, he has been talking about Nika ino vakwa, neve nevayo. I don't know if you guys have, have seen um, you know, a, a picture with people that had big stummies that were circulating yesterday on social media. People are not saying, this is the kingdom of Vene, the ones that are actually eating. You can see by the, you know, how big their tummies are, you know. <laughs> Quite interesting. Then Simba uh, responded, um, and I'm so glad to read his tweet, actually. He said, Mugabe begged for immunity from prosecution. Idi Munangagwa can play pretend president all he wants, but he's a criminal just delaying prosecution, hoping to die in the office. Oh, my gosh. This is really tough. I mean, say, ooh, that's, that's deep. But he was responding to the tweets that were being sent out by uh, Nick Mangwana. Yeah, mm, yeah that's, that's deep. That's a lot. That's a lot, honestly, a lot. But yeah, happy 44 uh, independence to everyone. And um, I want to wish you the best of God. But first and foremost, I want to thank you. I want to send this message to every Zimbabwean across the world. I want to thank you for your patience. I want to thank you for your commitment, really, to take care of your families, your friends, your cousins, your nieces, the church, um, you know, your service, helping the poor. Some of you, you, you donated to those that are in hospitals. Some, um, you know, you, you did your part actually repatriating bodies to Zimbabwe. I want to thank you really for all your hard work. Trust me, it's not going unnoticed. And also remember that God is seeing you from a distance. He will surely going to reward you. Every time you stretch your hand and be of a blessing to the poor, you are definitely lending from God. So I want you to know that you are amazing and you should be proud of yourself and your hard work. Don't worry about whatever happens in your surroundings. What's really important is your commitment to life and how you are impacting generations and changing lives, paying school fees for many people. Those that are in need, it means a lot. And I, um, from, from my house to, to yours, we want you to know that we appreciate you deeply. And go ahead and do it. Remember, remember there's a destiny that is so bright ahead. Your children will receive blessings of God because God, you have never borrowed God and in vain. Yeah, no, he doesn't. He's always going to give you in multiplication. I thank you once again. Now, moving on. Series of tweets have been dropped by Nelson Chamisa for the past few days. By the way, you know every move that he makes, people are just watching. What is he saying? You know, he's been really releasing tweet, uh, series of tweets. And I want to read the first tweet that he sent about a few days ago. Uh, when he said, um, okay, that was on the Independence Day. He said, happy 44, independence. Independence means dependence on God. Dependence means money in your pocket. Independence means food in your homes. Independence means jobs for the youth. Independence means decent jobs and salaries for workers. Independence means world-class working conditions for our uniformed and um, servicemen and women. Independence means decent pensions for pensioners. Independence means drugs in hospitals. Independence means affordable school fees. Independence means good roads and accessible districts countrywide. Independence means a learned in title deeds. Independence means a free speech. Independence means a free choice in elections. Independence means proper nation, um, national elections. Independence means uh, salaries of, for civil servants. Independence means real money, not fake money. Independence means dignity, decency, and honor for citizens. Independence means true freedom, happiness, and opportunities. Independence means trusted national processes. Independence means professional, durable, credible, dependable, and accountable national institutions. Independence means economic opportunities and advantages for everyone. Independence means 
functional and well-maintained infrastructure upon working systems. The hallmarks of independence are oneness, togetherness, a united nation, a together nation, a together society, a together people. What does independence mean for you? And I think you all agree one way or the other with him. That was Nelson Chamisa. There. A lot of messages that were circulating on, on social media. Uh, but the reason why I'm reading for Nelson Chamisa is because he's the one that I'm kind of focusing tonight when it comes to the new party that is coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Very interesting days ahead. Interesting days ahead. And he also says, uh, eyes on the ball. True independence is our lifetime. How was your independence day yesterday? Have a blessed week ahead. Happy Friday tonight and blessings to you. God is in it. And there's been a very interesting picture circulating, you know, that people are just playing with AI and he's dancing, you know. You know, I mean, it's, it's funny. You know, I'm, I'm a firm believer that, you know, whatever we do, whatever we do in terms of fulfilling purpose, we must do it in joy. You know, the moment you lose your joy, you lose everything. Depression is terrible. I hate it with passion. You know, if you want to see me doing great things, just see me laughing. You know, I don't know what I can do without laughter. I don't know where I can be without joy. So joy is what we need to push forward. You and I, we need to always carry our faces, you know, with light. Very, very important. All right, so there was a message that he, uh, Nelson Chamisa actually dropped on his channel today. I don't know if you guys have followed his channel uh, on uh, WhatsApp. For those who didn't, please just go in there. I can leave the link. I will pin the link so that you guys can go in there and follow up. For those that are supporting him, I'm sure he's going to be sharing quite a lot, even if you don't support him. I follow uh, President Emerson Nangagwa. I don't support his own PF. I follow Nick Mangwana. I don't subscribe to his own PF, but I just want to know what's really going on in the city. I also follow Linda Masara as well. I don't subscribe to your party, but I do love him. There's quite a lot of um, you know, um, politicians. I do follow Kasukure as well. Kasukure, is, I know he's going to be playing also in this upcoming election. Um, you know, I, I love them and I support them. They're my brothers in Incredible people, you know, so that is so important to me. Um, you know, I want to tell you it's really, really important. Follow, listen, what are they saying? Let's have a conversation. And I, and I don't want to be, I don't want to live in the dark, you know. I want to know everything that's happening um, in the corner. So we're going to be listening to Nelson Chamisa now. What he said uh, on his um, page, that is on, uh, on, the, on his channel, he left a message this morning that we're going to be listening to shortly. Um, together. We are going to be doing so. Take a listen. Hello, 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 um, my dear friends. I want to come to you just to appreciate you. Thank you very much for being part of this Chamisa News uh, Channel Network. Uh, we are going to be blasting and releasing a lot of uh, updates. Uh, we are going to be interactive, of course, on other platforms, but here we will be feeding you with um, latest developments, news, our thoughts, perspectives, insights, uh, and more importantly, uh, wisdom uh, is uh, downloaded from our Father from on high. And I want to thank you that you continue to be, you know, uh, the wings to myself, you continue to encourage me, you continue to give me momentum. I wish to appreciate uh, what you do to me. May God bless you and may God be with you. You know that um, this year we are 44 years old as a people, as a country, and of course, uh, I would have wanted to say as a nation, but we are not yet a nation. A nation is about shared values, a shared vision, shared goals, shared aspirations, and shared dreams. Um, but at the moment, we have not yet shared a journey even. Uh, so we can't share a destination without sharing a, a journey. So this is why we've been emphasizing the need to come together, to come reason together, so that we reconnect to our mojo as a people. We reconnect to our coming together as a people. We are once again a one people, like we were during the liberation struggle, like we have always been in our communities. You know, in our communities, it's all about gathering together. You know, we sit around the fire, we chat, we share stories, we share inspirations, aspirations. Uh, we are a together people. We go to the fields together, uh, we go to church together, we attend funerals together, we mourn together, we celebrate and laugh together. We are a together people, basically. You know, we do things together. We go to deep tanks in the villages together. Uh, even in our workplaces, our lifestyles, our work styles, we are a together people. Basically, we do parties together. 
and we worship together, we pray together, we sing together, we celebrate together, we praise together, we, we, we do things together. And that is who we are. That's Ubuntu. That's the Africanness of who we are. And that is what we would want to see in a proper uh, new uh, Great Zimbabwe, where we are able to come together and say, your problem is my problem. Your issue is my issue. Ubuntu. You know, my challenge is your challenge. My being is your being. We are not selfish. We become a together people. Uh, and this is why, for me, when we reflect on independence, the 44 years, you know, you, you can't say there is independence when there is no basics. There is no independence without food on the table. There is no independence uh, when money is not in your pocket and when you don't have a roof above your head. Uh, there is no independence when food is not in your mouth or your stomach or in your house. Independence is about dignity. And dignity, not just to your name, to your life, to your being, to your body. And dignity to the nation, pride and honor to our country. Right now we go to neighboring countries. We are treated as if we are second class people. We, know we are cheap people, but we are a people of value. We have dignity, we have politeness, we have attributes, we have principles. We have values. We are strong people. You know, we are a strong people. We, we, we are a great Zimbabwe people. We have a background that tells us who we are. You know, we have fought heroic battles and struggles, and we've won them. We, we have fought against adversaries, and we've won against them. So independence must be about our dignity. You, there's no independence when you're naked. There's no independence when you have nothing to your name. When we have no value, no wealth, we must be creating wealth as a nation. We must be regaining our status amongst the feminine of nations. Independence can't be independence when millions of us Zimbabweans are scattered everywhere, dotted around, dotted around the capitals of the world, you know, seeking employment, seeking opportunities in greener pastures. Why should we look at the grass that's greener on the other side when this grass is greenest in our own country? We have over 60 mineral resources. Uh, we, we are hard-working people, a peace-loving people. We are leadership people. We are a, a, a very humble people, a hospitable people. We are a nation of hospitality. Why should we have our people losing their dignity, Makwere Kweri, you know, treated as Makwere Kweri, you know, uh, derogatory names for, for ourselves, killed being victims of xenophobia, racism, and other discriminatory practices. We are a great people, and that should be who we are. And that's why I was emphasizing that, yes, independence must have a new meaning. Independence must mean our dependence on God. It must mean money in our pocket, food in our homes, jobs for the young people, decent jobs and salaries, opportunities for you and me, world-class conditions, systems, you know, our uniformed servicemen and women must be a people of honor. Yeah. We must have pensioners being given the dignity of work, of having worked and uplifted the country and the economy and the commerce of our land. I mean, no drugs in the hospitals. Independence is about drugs. It's about books in the schools. School fees that's affordable. Affordable education. Mm. Education for every child. Good and accessible roads across the whole country. We shouldn't be having dust roads. We shouldn't be having gullies and donkers as roads. The whole by Bambaya. Let's have proper roads. Let's have proper roads everywhere. It's about leadership. We are in a nation of land, uh, in a nation of land that is so rich, rich soils. Let's give title to our land. Let's have title deeds. Let's have land for every Zimbabwean. People must have land and must not be moved or displaced from their land. That's what we are all about. Free speech, elections. Not makers of whatever party, why do you support this party, not that party? Mm -hmm. Anybody must support their own party. And changing political parties must be like, you know, having one government and another, just like in Ghana, just in like Botswana. It's happening elsewhere here on the continent. Let's change political parties like we're changing diapers. You know, not to have this thing where it's almost like taboo, a one-party state. We must have a multi-party state. In fact, we've even gone further. 
we are worse off. It's no longer a one party state, it's a one man state, a one family state. Mm. That cannot be. We must not have that. We can't be that. Let's have proper money, decent salaries for our workers, and even for a single servant. Dignity and decent and honor for each and every citizen. Happiness for you, happiness for me, freedom for you, freedom for me, opportunity for you, opportunity for me. What makes the difference between a millionaire and a pauper is opportunity. Yeah. We must be a nation of opportunity, a nation of millionaires. Of course, we can all be millionaires. But when you are even a worker in a nation that's rich, you're a millionaire. Millionaireship is not just measured by the money in your pocket. It's also measured by your dignity, your value, your worth and your wealth. Your value will be quick to future generations. Let's build a functional and well-maintained infrastructure system that works. These are the hallmarks of independence. Thank you very much. Full independence is coming. And the hallmarks of a full independence are oneness, a togetherness. All right. So, yeah, you had uh, Nelson Chamisa speaking. Um, he said, let us come together. And, uh, you know, he's wishing that we have a better Zimbabwe. That's his speech that he dropped this today, um, you know, um, regarding the, I think she was actually addressing the independence part. And also kind of could give you a bit of light in terms of what, what are the plans that are coming up. Um, so before I even proceed to what, 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 regarding the new party that is coming, I just want to, do you think that he was shedding a washing movie? Um, Wente or Kaston Matu. <laughs> I'll tell you why, because they, they attended the, actually the, the independence. Let me, let me just say this, first and foremost, because I'm very different in terms of my thinking. Okay. I saw that most people who, who may be aligning with Nosu Chamisa were not happy with the fact that they saw Wende, you know, um, actually, can I tell you? I'm, I'm, okay. I'm, I'm seeing when I know how many, uh, you know, uh, react to stupid stuff sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> the way he was like standing with um, Chris Muchangwa's wife, Monica. Mm -mm 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 -mm. And I was like, what is Chris? <laughs> you know, you saw, um, you also saw Washman Nube, you saw Shavangu there, the celebrations with it. Because one thing that I don't like about Zimbabwe, and I'm going to say this honestly to, to His Excellency, the President, every time when there's a function that's supposed to be a national function, it always acts like it's a Zampia function. We always see with only Zampia people, either you're doing your galas, you're drinking and you're eating. But the rest of the people, like, they don't really matter. It don't, it don't, to me, it doesn't make sense. You saw yesterday for the celebrations of independence. That's why it, be, it becomes a taboo when they see, like, individuals who kind of aligning with the opposition parties, being the only people that attend them, these, um, you know, functions. Then that's when this, this stays. Because if, if in this moment, context will be like, no, guys, we are celebrating our independence, everyone should come. Everyone should attend. I don't, I don't think that people will have a problem with it. But it always seems like it's a ZANPF thing. Which I find it very weird, honestly. <laughs> it's weird because independence was won for the Zimbabweans, not for only the few guys who aligned themselves with the ruling party. So I guess that's one of the reasons why people were shading them. So you know, it was a lot on social media. A lot. Also, then also Chamisa said, don't be like a bubble gum. A bubble gum is discarded after it loses its temporary test. I don't know why bubble gums don't learn. Refuse being used and abused because you know I, I, I we all know the ruling party. I mean, <laughs> forget about you if you're being bought for a few minutes. They are all people, and I mean, there's no loyalty there. You know, it's like Ibran and Babu. You know, it's a game of chess. Even within the parameters of the ruling party, a lot has been happening. A, a lot, a lot. I want to send my condolences to the armies that passed away like a few days ago. Two days ago, if I'm not mistaken, again, involved in, a, in an accident. I also saw another brother or as on PF as well was driving this car. I think it was over speeding. Also, again, died on the spot with the people that he was with. Very sad, honestly. But again, we always been talking about the roads and say, let's fix our roads. You know, now you can see that it's not even about a political part of a leader. It's really saying, let's build a Zimbabwe that will make all of us be happy. Driving on good roads, yeah. I, I'm, I'm praying for a day that I'm just going to be driving in Zimbabwe. First of all, I can't even drive in Zimbabwe right now. I'm going to lose my mind. Like the way that I've seen people driving there. There's no order. People just drive. I, I, I can't. I can't even last for five minutes. I can't. Honestly. And I can't wait to be in Zimbabwe. I can drive going wherever I want to go. If I want to go to my shingle, I come back, be, be busy brying and laughing and doing whatever I want to do and be happy. I can't wait. But I can't do it right now. The roads are terrible. Like... I can't stand it. Like, honestly, with all respect, <laughs> I can't stand it. <laughs> you know, 
But yeah, when we say let's fix the Zimbabwe, we simply say let's do it for all. And did you also saw Zambia? Lead, you know, you know what, listen. You know when things are not well like in your house and you see what's happening with your neighbor? You like see what's going on with your neighbor. I mean, people who are in an abusive relationship you can understand. When you see things on social media, like, oh my god, they seem to be happy on the other side. That's what happened with people yesterday when they saw Zambia. You know, in Zambia, when Hichilema was actually commissioning a beautiful hospital, people were like, oh, Zabo, by the way. Remember last time we also saw um, Senegal when they were busy, you know, greeting their president. We were like, Zabo, when we go Senegal. Ah, oh, God. So, Yichilema was actually, um, you know, commissioning a beautiful hospital. And we only started comparing with what we have seen being called hospitals. Those are two rooms that we have seen in our space. <laughs> we have seen people commissioning ponds of fish. We have seen people commissioning toilets. You know, it, it, it breaks my heart, honestly, considering how rich we are as a nation. All these minerals, what a rich nation, Zimbabwe, a blessed people. But uh, hey, 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 I don't know. I don't know what's going on in the other side. So I don't know if you think they, it was, they were shaded, but to me, it's like, honestly, the last time I checked, last independence, also 20 was triple C. People were encouraged to go to a little independence. So I'm saying, let people be. Honestly, let people be. There's nothing wrong. If a person wants to go and attend any meeting, even for some PF, whatever, it's okay. Honestly, if we truly want to move forward as a Zimbabwean people, we must learn to just accommodate each other. And understand that is simply eating and drinking. At the end of the day, what's in your heart, you know what's going on. I know, and I relate with everybody, but I just find some people who maybe some people may not want to talk to me, but trust me, I have no problem with them. But one thing for sure is I'm not gonna eat their food. I'm not gonna drink their water. That's one thing for sure. With that, <laughs> that one is guaranteed. <laughs> you know, I'm not. Why? Because I'm afraid. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But by the way, also. I want it to, this must be known. I can eat poison, it will never hurt me. <laughs> but no, what happens is gonna kill that one that tried it. Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah. I'll tell you what happened a few years ago. Um, early years in my early 20s. <laughs> I sat with a couple. So I don't know for some reason, also, you know, we know when you're young, I was renting a room there, right? And the couple, I'm not gonna mention much because I don't wanna, I'm not a hater, right? But there's a Melbourne couple. So, I don't know for some reason, the woman just thought maybe the husband was kind of vibing with me. Because I used to come back home very late because of my work. I used to work over time. You know what I mean? Just loved it to work. And I come back late. I'm young. I'm excited. You know, I love the money. I'm, I'm living my life. And then she thought. So, she decided to poison me. Okay, she put poison in my food. <laughs> you, you are hearing it well from me. <laughs> I only woke up in the hospital. Right. Yes, I woke up in the hospital. Nobody knew that I was actually in the hospital. And then eventually I come back home and she had to come and apologize that I'm sorry. I thought you were kind of vibing with one and my husband and whatever, whatever the case was. And what I'm trying to say is fast forward in a month or so, her daughter had a mysterious death at school. Huh? You try me, it's going to come back to you. I'm not playing. Yeah, I'm in business. Don't, 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 don't play with the people of God. Okay. <laughs> I'm on a mission here. Yeah. So I just want to warn you in advance. Don't try it. It will not work. Otherwise, you're just gonna be having problems yourself because mm, 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 mm. I'm cold here. <laughs> I'm doing my father's work. You understand? And my father is the one that commands the troops anytime and minute. I'm not afraid of any human that breathes. I walk with God. I hear God speaks. You understand me? Yes. So please don't try. Don't try. Don't try. All right. Okay. So here we are talking about the issue of uh, the new baby that is coming. Okay, that uh, Nelson Chamisa decided to post on, uh, on Twitter and he, on, on X, sorry, my bed. I don't know why I'm still stuck with Twitter. You know, I, I maybe that game should have just lived the way that it was. So he said, okay, defining a path, a new path. The path is finally here. Defining a new path. <laughs> okay. So then he also responded and he said, Isu Kile, let's go. I'm just waiting for the column. <laughs> so for my jacket as well. So when I was trying to buy, because we're getting to winter, right? Because now we are going to be preparing for the new party. Um, so because it was the blue. So when I got in there, I was like, oh, I'm going to get a coat, blue coat. So now 
when 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 they were, they were when they saw the the, the lawsuit on social media when uh, the blessed guy which is Zon P F Scrawny I'm not gonna play you no know, lies or whatever Zon P F Scrawny you know say that they were suing Nelson Chamisa for the color I was like okay you know, oh, I don't know the blue <laughs> I'm just waiting for the right color I'm coming back so keep that jacket away I'm coming back with the right color at the right time and forum so as soon as the color is out yeah I'm on my way <laughs> to, get, to get my jacket. <laughs> <laughs> this one I'm gonna push it like big time. Yeah, I just can't wait for freedom in the country. I cannot wait for freedom. I cannot wait for freedom. I want to fulfill my purpose in peace. I don't want to be questioned when I speak truth into power that I'm wrong. I want to be free. I want to see people succeeding. I want to see the youth, you know, living their best life. I want to see you know, fairness in the country. I want to see the right people based on meritocracy, you know, taking part in terms of building our country. I'm tired of all these friends, body, my friend, my relative. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. It doesn't work for me. I want to see the right people taking charge and doing the work. I want to see marriages restored. I'm sick and tired of seeing divorce, children suffering. It's time. It's time. I see people rebuilding our nation in the right direction. I want to see the true church not manipulation, deception, lies, greedy, it has to go. I want to see the real church happening in that country. I want to see hospitals clean, pristine, I mean top-notch, real, real stuff in hospitals. Because I have been, there was a time I got sick, I could have died actually when I was only 21. <laughs> yeah, they were almost like coming after me. You know, so I know. And there was this woman, a beautiful woman, she was, oh God, may God bless her. And I wish, she, I wish she could remember me. You, you are just like an albino lady. If you are a nurse and Parenyatwa, then my 2000, please, if you were, just get hold of me. I would want to talk to you because you saved my life. So I know what I'm talking about. I've been in the hospital when we, saw, when we had the real hospitals. So all these jokes that we are seeing today where people are dying anytime, any minute, mm -mm, mm -mm, that's not what we are looking for. So I'm telling you guys, we must, we must by all means, pushing on right. It's no longer a political part issue. It's really about saying, let's come together holding hands and build the Zimbabwe that we want. Everybody must come together. We build the Zimbabwe that we want. Now, Dr. Rush, he said, the wait is long and a pain for my leader, but I haven't lost hope. I'm inspired by you. Continue to beat hurt. So yeah, we are on our way to have the Zimbabwe that we want. Now, Magaisa is one. My Magaisa, I think this seems to be, uh, it's not the actual name. <laughs> no. So Zimbabwe needs a political change, not a currency change, which is a fact. Uh, a currency is a bundle of trust uh, and confidence. A currency is not a currency without confidence and value. Money represents a collective trust in the stability and the reliability of the government. Its value is driven from the amount um amalgamation of this confidence so yeah again the people's confidence is required in order for us to be able to fix our currency uh, you know you know the zig issue that has been going on you know um, and i mean many many really uh, many people have been saying this currency will not stand but i still believe and want to give the governor the benefit of a doubt you know to see what he can do because he keeps promising people that no don't worry about this i, I have got your back but again, looking at his resume, honestly, when I started to look at it, his friendship with the Zampia people, the business that they're doing through the, the this this um, you know garages and you know <laughs> Zuba, <laughs> so many businesses, it makes me wonder. Um, you know, he said he's you know, but Mr. Governor, Mr. Shaimano, I'll give you the benefit of doubt. Okay. I give you the benefit of that because I'm a firm believer that when you support someone, it's up to them either to win or to fail. So you have my support. You have my support. Okay. And let's see what, what's happening. Of course, we believe in you. Okay. If it fails, please come clean and just come out and say, yo, this is not going to work. And again, we can also hold hands and find ways to move forward. There's no need for us to spend years and years just roaming around the circle without a solution. It's not worth it. It's really really not worth it all right so moving on i want to make this very clear that jonathan moyo wants to keep on spreading hatred unnecessarily but let me tell you i'm not a hater honestly i'm not a hater because the people that reshaped me to be who i am today were white people that's why i whether you're white or black i don't really care i can vibe with anybody chinese white indians i can vibe with anybody 
but he keeps on throwing shade and hatred towards Jeff Quarter, which I find it very malice. I find it wicked. I, uh, that's the right way to use it. I don't find why this man is so angry towards him. Okay, first and foremost, he's dead. He's dead. Okay, he's dead. Jonathan was dead. Well, you know, died because of Gukra Hunti. Was that done by white people? Okay, I'm not trying to say white people do not do wrong. And by the way, because I'm not the, the type of Smith, I get that our parents went through, but some of our parents were able to forgive. All right. His father was killed during the Gukra Hundi time. That wasn't done by white people. All right. He is in exile, not because of white people. All right. So we, we, we must say things as they are. But this man throws shades and hatred towards Deft Quarter, which I find it really evil. It's wrong. Right. Deft Quarter did not attend independence. For his personal reasons, how do you need to search out why he did not attend? But let's let's read his eyes. So he sent a message again, hatred. He said, caught at Snap's Independence Day uh, celebrations in Mulawayo, Innocent Magondo. So that was, a, was the person that wrote the, the, the article. So he said, Newsday Zimbabwe, 19th of April 2024, report that Deft caught at the partyless Mulawayo mayor, uh, Mulawayo mayor yesterday snubbed uh, Zimbabwe's Independence Day celebrations in the city that he purposed to lead. Apparently to protest what he alleged is the disrespect of his office by the government. Um, believe the fact that this is a case of an ex Rodi who fought in vain for and with Rhodesia to oppose and prevent the making of the nation state of Zimbabwe. That Zimbabweans in and outside the country were commemorating yesterday. The snub, the snub spoke volumes not only about quoted uh, lingering Rudy politics but also about the fact that 44 years since Uhuru he has not come to terms with the fact of Zimbabwe's national independence as a permanent historical and existential uh, reality, reality. It is telling that Quarter did not only publicize his snub of Independence Day commemorations as a big story and a major media event, but he also proved his deep-seated uh, hatred of Zimbabwe's independence itself by making sure that he did not organize a separate or alternative event for the residents of Lawayo who follow or believe in his politics. He is a mayor of Lawai who did not want Lawai to have independent celebrations of any kind yesterday. In this connection, it is also notable that a quarter snub of Independence Day was representational um, in that it was emblematic of the views and interests of his white constituencies in Lawai who, like him, were uh, cons conspicuous by being absent from the independent celebrations. But of course, the people celebrated in their numbers. Going forward, now that he has made his snub for, of Zimbabwe clear and loud of the one and only one special day that matters the most as a symbolic expression and affirmation of Zimbabwe's sovereignty, Kotat and his ilk should not be surprised and they should not complain when he is snubbed in practical terms and even booted out of office. Oh, with all the work that um, Kodad is doing, Jonathan, we want him to be booted out. Can you see? This man is hating from Kenya. Right now, as we speak, that is his mother-in-law's camp. I'm not a hater, right? But I see things as they are. I would be sitting, I should be sitting here and respect Mr. Jonathan Moy because Mr. Jonathan Moy is as old as my daddy. You know, he's like, you can be my father. You know what I'm saying? So I should be extending a heart of respect. But unfortunately, sometimes I have to say things as they are. I don't appreciate the hatred is always drive. Honestly, guys, honestly, I must, I must be honest, guys. For me to actually say happy independence, I, I, find, I, I literally feel my heart drops. Like... Are you for real? So my mind, my words, and my heart is not aligning because I know that it's not true. It can be on paper, but there is no link or there's no alignment with the reality that we are facing daily. So honestly, I feel like it's just being mean and, and reshading on him. It's unnecessarily because the fact remains, brother, you are in exile. Guys, there's no place like a home. You have a pinned tweet on your profile complaining about how the soldiers came to your house, you know, firing shots and bullets. And you're the same person who's literally hating on somebody who's trying to make a society a better place. Mr. Moyo, I think you need to start introspecting. 
There's so much deep hate in your soul. It is so deep. But unfortunately, us as the new generation, we are not willing to inherit it from you. Okay? Because I've been asking questions when I looked at the Chinese and the Russians who are literally milking some of our resources. And people are saying it, they're articles or the people are complaining that these people are taking away our resources. I ask you questions and I say, why did we chase away wise people? They were creating jobs. So many industries that people were having employment. But here we have those that are just literally exploit our people. We don't ask ourselves the right questions, do we? Again, this just doesn't pay of gaslighting. When there's something that is so important, they have a tendency of gaslighting. You know what I'm talking about? Yes. The reality of what's going on in our society is evident. The footprints are everywhere. We can see the evidence, but they know they want to drive the truth away and try to push in the narrative of lies so that you believe in a lie. Yo, yeah, listen, we are too grown. This moment when people are too educated to see truth and actually to know that there's something wrong here. So nobody's buying it. But guess what? We're not the only ones in Africa, actually. We're suffering the same pandemic. I think if we can listen to the, to the first lady from Sierra, uh, Sierra Leone, can actually, we can actually understand what's really going on. I mean, I told you a few days ago when we were discussing about Zika Maibir here. And Zika Maibir was talking about, um, you know, when he was having an interview with Trevor Ngube, he was talking about how there are people who are in Europe who are funding our suffering. They are funding our suffering. They pretend like there's an election. Guys, we have seen, I mean, since when? Did we ever benefit any from all these shenanigans that happens every time? Except shame. Shame. You remember what happened last year? I remember so many, uh, you know, uh, meetings were done by South Africans, even on X as well, bastardizing us. I mean, what a painful um, you know, journey that we've been walking. But we are not the only ones. Sierra Leone is going, it went through the same before they have the new president. But the wife of the new president said, I'm speaking on behalf of the citizens. I'm a citizen. They can't fire me because my husband is, you know, he's the, he's the commander in chief. I can just, I can only imagine. I can imagine if my husband is the commander in chief. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? If my husband is the commander in chief, <laughs> I think my mouth is going to be even more open. I, I swear. <laughs> you know, because I'm, when I see wrong, I'm not going to keep quiet. I'm like, that needs to be fixed, y'all. That needs to be fixed. So she's speaking honestly, eloquently, and honestly, respect for the first lady for Sierra Leone. Y'all, I just want to send some shout out to women because women are not, no longer taking nonsense anymore. I've told you that women, we are, we, we are people who say, we let men lead. When we let men be at the forefront, but when we say that y'all are not doing things right, we're going to open our mouth and we will speak. Yeah, it's that season where women are coming up and said, we have had enough. We have children, we have generations to protect. You know, we are the ones that carry the burden. Women, we are so connected for our children because of the umbilical cord. So we're not going to keep it quiet here. Yeah. <laughs> we're not going to keep it quiet. We're not going to buy all these ego um, nonsense that people want us to begging, to wasting our time and uh, no, generations are crying and kids are suffering. No. So the woman of Sierra Leone, the first lady was having an interview. I was seeing in situation is... If you hear speaking, you know that it's us, no one else. This is why there's no transparency as far as our minerals are concerned. Recently, you heard Mr. Mchangwa alleging that the gold was stolen. Huh? And you know, he's talking years after that they were stolen. 15 billion Marange diamond vanished. Millions of money from gold vanished. Gold mafia came through. We saw it with our two eyes. It's too online today. Nothing happened. You heard about that Marino horns are actually being, you know, sold out. Nothing happened. People have got farms that they don't even use. No one says anything. But no, we're not the only ones. So let's take a listen to the wife of the president of Sierra Leone. Then you understand exactly what's going on in Zimbabwe currently. Take a listen. Of the social contract in human history is colonialism. Yeah. And it's that mechanism that some states have used to extract resources from other places, such as Sierra Leone. That deprives countries of the resources they need for government services, for education, for health. So I was hoping you could reflect a little bit 
on what those forces have done to Sierra Leone and what kind of accountability we might be able to think about just to imagine a way forward from where we've begun now. When you, you look at what Sierra Leone have to offer, when you come to our mineral resources, the kind of mineral resources we have in our country is enough to take care of everybody in that country. We should not have a single poor person in Sierra Leone. But unfortunately, we are not given the free will to make decisions on our own mineral resources. There's always Big Brother who decides. And when you fight and say, no, we are not going to do this, they use the system to stop you. It's either they set you up with the opposition and they will be supporting the opposition against you from the back or they cause unnecessary chaos in your country so that you are not able to even govern your own people. They will do things to make you not to uh, be functionable. And of course, any country that don't have peace cannot develop. You have to have peace before you talk about development. I'll give you a simple example about Sierra Leone. Every mining company that is in Sierra Leone today is owned by a foreigner. Every mining company. Yeah. If it's not the Chinese, it's the American, it's the British. Our electricity, Bumuna, is run by the British. And we still don't have light. We're looking for light, electricity. If you don't have electricity, how can you talk about education? How can you talk about health facility? How can you talk about improving the infrastructure of your country? We don't have electricity. Now, do we actually even have proper water, pipe bone water, so that our kids will not be sick? We don't have those facilities. Why, with all the minerals we have, there is a cap you put before my husband became the president of Sierra Leone, Sierra Leone was benefiting. They said, uh, what's the word? 0.000.1%. What is that? Basically, a company can take as much as $100 million out of the country in terms of minerals, and then they can just give the country $10,000. Now, what will $10,000 do for our health system? What is $10,000 do for our educational system? And these are the things I believe that are stopping Africa from progressing. We don't have a say. The sense about us celebrating independence, I don't know why we celebrate no. independence, because we are not free. That is my own take. I'm not speaking also on behalf of the government of Sierra Leone, nor am I speaking on behalf of His Excellency the President. I am speaking as Fatima, as a citizen of a country who believes that things need to change. Where do we go from here? Do you have any practical ideas about where we might start? <laughs> or collective ideas that we might gain support for? I feel Africa, we, patriotism is very important. You have to love your country to want your country to be a better place. Patriotism. I think we need to be, we have to have that sense of patriotism in our countries. And um, our leaders also should be subjected to that. You know, it is not only when uh, you were talking about election and then everybody come out and celebrate and after election, that's it. Accountability. Who accounts for what is happening? Who is the one who is changing the narrative of what is happening? Like I said, as a first lady, I am not part of a government system. I am a wife of a president. So when I speak, I speak on behalf of the people because I understand what the people are going through. At the end of the day, I'm not being paid salary, so and I cannot be fired either. <laughs> so that's the, the, the advantage. That's the advantage of being a first lady. But I believe that for Africa, what is happening in Africa today, it need to change, and it need to change now. There is no time like now, because for Sierra Leone, we now have a president who believes that we cannot wait for other people to come and develop us. We cannot wait for another country to come and prescribe how our country should be run or what we need in our country. You know, this divide and rule, 
If you're close to China, we will not come to your country. If you're close to America, we will not come to your country. I mean, the fight that is between England, Europe, America, China, Russia is not a Sierra Leone fight. Agreed. Yeah. That's not our problem. We're fighting for our daily bread. We're looking to have education, just like America. We're looking to have good health facility, just like Europe. We're looking to have governance structure where a, one single person cannot be the dictator of a nation. That's what we're looking for. And in that process, we are going to be allies to everybody who wants us to grow. But if we now align ourselves with someone, and then this other person now is feel offended that, oh, you know, I'm, I'm coming from China now. I flew in. I mean, I've gone around the world to get to Boston, you know. I went to China and then come here. I will, before here, I went to England and then flew into America. For me, I am not restricted where I should go or who I should be talking to. I am going around the world to see a country that sees Africa not as uh, uh, an, not just as an ally of what you'll be getting from us, but a country that sees Sierra Leone as partners and treat us with respect. You cannot be coming to our country and take everything that will make mm -hmm. us develop and then you still treat us as inferior people as if we don't know what we're doing. I think that is wrong, you know. We're looking for partners that value us, people that will come to our country and say, you know what, this country has suffered enough. They need to grow. We were once the atom of Africa. Every country within sub-Saharan Africa used to come to Sierra Leone for our education. And today, what can we be proud of? We cannot talk about education in Sierra Leone because they've ruined that for us. Everything that has empowered Sierra Leone has been ruined. And now we have a leader who wants to fix everything. There is a problem. In Africa, you should not have a leader that is assertive, a leader that knows what his people want, a leader that wants to change the, what is happening. The moment you have that, it's everyone's target. Break. Can you hear? It's exactly what's going on in Zimbabwe. Exactly what's going on in, in Zimbabwe. In Africa, you should not have... <laughs> do, you, do you remember the, the Sundrick report when uh, they were saying that apparently there was money, there was money, uh, you know, that was actually moved from Zimbabwe, from the Reserve Bank of Zimbabwe, you know, through South Africa, Mauritius, to, to London. And this London, that money was buying um, a mineral, um, you know, a, 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 it was a mineral company was buying, um, you know, one of our mineral stuff in Zimbabwe. But then Kudacha Gure, also there were hands that were saying the president as well and other people. I'm just, I'm just saying. But when Chamisa is standing with a white person, you are selling the country, right? Gaslighting. Yeah. Just trying to, to keep you busy with lies and hating each other just for nothing. All those dedicated strategies that are being employed every time, dropping a bomb and you are suddenly fighting with one another. While a lot of things are going on in the background so that you don't really see. No one explains. Namuchanga is the nerve to say, oh, God was stolen by Ali Baba, you know. The, the Arabs, are you telling me that when God is in the vault, a Zimbabwean God, where the, nobody can get in, like other votes have seen? Alibaba, the Chinese billionaire, can go in there and steal all gold? Does that really make sense to you? <laughs> like they're talking to kids, you know, like you're, when you're talking to people, or those ignorant people who don't even have a clue of what they're doing, you can just tell them anything. They must believe, believe in all our lies that we tell. Don't question whatever we say it is. Imagine a president's wife is speaking. Are you guys surprised that with all the minerals we have, we don't have nothing? In, in fact, we only have debts. The president came out asking for two billion US dollars to feed our people. But we're like, hold on. How many billions are going out of this country every year from our minerals? Excuse the three minerals that we have in Zimbabwe. 
yet we are poor to the core. We are suffering our people. Ah, oh, kids can't even get medication. Things that we saw on social media. It breaks your heart. Breaks your heart. We are slaves in our own country. And people in Europe are calling the shots. You ask yourself, what the hell are the people? They're the ones that are wearing all those expensive rings, y'all. That's your husband's, yeah, in Zimbabwe. Can I say this? It breaks my heart. There are people that are married who can't even afford to buy a gold ring to give their wife. To just say, baby, I want to tell you I love you. Even diamond ring, they can't afford. But let me tell you, go to America and see. <laughs> go there and see the rings. They're like, no, I don't want that. I think I'm just going to want that. And how much are you going to spend? I don't want that one. Yeah, it hurts. It really hurts. But you heard you speak exactly what we're experiencing. There's no difference. Our education, will you ever talk about education? But you know. But today, where are we? Everything has been ruined. I've told you that West people don't lose that easily for your own information. They'll fight you to the thick and thin. They'll find a way to nail you. You thought they were gone? No. No. We're just being deceived. They are full in control. You had a decross confirming that Tunata Gure is successful because he works with white people. Didn't you hear that? Because it's the two white people who are backing him up. That's why he is a billionaire. What is I supposed to tell you? And you see them in the church telling you to believe in a fake thing or believe. Oh, yeah, Canaan is coming. Huh? Canaan is coming. <laughs> we are five, ten steps ahead of you. We know exactly what's going on. In 2024, information is at our, it, is, it is at our disposal. We know what's going on. Remove violence. Remove force. Remove thugs. And head on, we can talk. Let's talk. You know, truth will come out. That's why you have to employ your thugs to silence people. And you are in the church and telling people Canaan is coming. And telling people a lie to believe in lies. Shame on you. Shame on you. I said, but you can hear that the woman is broken. She's broken. But there'll be a way out. We are going to come out of it and the money must come back. All the money is hidden. They must come back. Moving on, Jairus again, again, this man, I don't know, this man is like 24 seven is just working on fighting uh, President Masum Nangago's family. So he said, Makafira Ma, Enyu Mahara, it was yesterday on the 18th, um, could Anam Nangago ni muri yake obedi mpofu ni vamo, you know, the other word I can't read. Vabe Zhao fumi wenyika, Nangago, his wife, his children, cronies are smuggling our minerals meant for the betterment of our country. It's people out of this country to their personal votes. But he also heard the president, Masum Nangago, confirming that we do have gold, but he can't mention where the gold is. I guess maybe because of these stealing, you know, allegations, he may say, I'm trying to protect it so that it doesn't get stolen. So he was talking about uh, that they died for literally nothing. We are still stuck in all these shenanigans. But you know, did you, did you see what has been going on lately? Like yesterday with the dance, you know, yeah. But sepete, sepete, is it? You know, we were talking about a few days ago, talking about how we have seen our morals decaying daily. You saw what happened with the girls in Mashingo. We just lost value. The girls from Mashingo just lost value. We've been known for decades being the most expensive women. If you want to marry in Mashingo, you know that. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We've been known for years. <laughs> Mashingo in Makazvano Dura. It has been known. But to my surprise, the young girls were arrested for prostitution. And um, to me, I'm like, guys, please, please. We don't want to, please. You know... You know, in property, in property, um, I remember selling a house in, a, in an estate. 
it was an, it was a very small little land, but there were very big, expensive houses there. So for that reason, the market of that house was actually very high. You know, so what was selling more was the golf course, the area, it's in a beautiful estate. And I was shocked, you know, how much I sold it, you know what I mean, and how much I got. <laughs> um, what am I trying to say to you? There's so much power in value. We, 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 we must tell the truth that it's, it's difficult now for men to actually say, oh, am I going to pay to pay a, a lot of money to marry a woman when there's all these girls who are just naked out there? You know what I'm saying? What for? We must agree that we have lost our values in Zimbabwe in terms of moral. Morals are gone. People are living like dogs, not human beings anymore. A lot of nonsense is going on. You can see, and I was saying this is ZPFC legacy, and I'm saying this and I mean it. If you check what was going on yesterday on social media, how women, our mothers, were shaking their bodies, it's shocking. The last time I checked, these people could be protecting the legacy and the strength, our moral fiber. But no, it's a different story. They are the ones, mothers, who are dancing provocatively in front of their children and grandchildren. And everything is normal. So gone are the days where men would be paying money to go to stripping clubs. No, not anymore. No, they can actually see people, if you go to a rally, you get to have that time of... Um, you know, enjoying women, shaking themselves in front of you. That's how we have lost our morals. It's Zampia's legacy of immorality. And I'm saying this, and it, it must get to the top there. This is wrong. It must be condemned by any sane person. I saw all social media went on fire. Which this can't be. These are our parents. Imagine it's a son, I'm seeing my mom. Dancing that way to any small boy on the streets? No, guys, it can't be. It really cannot be because of poverty. Because they saw someone dancing and they were given a car in a in aqua. I call it an aqua, and my sister always said, no, It's an aqua, man. Aqua is like aqua. <laughs> I don't even know that car. You know. No, it can't be. We need to restore our morals back in society. Whatever it takes, it will happen, whether you like it or not. That is not classy. That is not who we are. That is not Zimbabwean. It's unheard of. We can't build a society humiliating women, exposing our children to such kind of behavior. Because kids are were there watching. What do you expect them to do? But it is an PFC legacy. It's their legacy of immorality. It has to be stopped by all means. And by, because I know God can hear our prayers and our, our, you know, when we speak, it will end. It will come to an end soon. We cannot carry on seeing such kind of nonsense. Really, we can't. So let's take a look and see what's going on on, on X um, with the issue of uh, the new political party. <laughs> that is coming. I don't know if the colors yet, but I told you when the colors are there, we're going to be dro dropping like there's those hearts. It can be, be it pink, be it green, be it... So because he sent us something with a green color, people are like, is it green color? <laughs> I don't know what color it is. I really don't know what color it is. You know what I mean? I really don't know what color it is. So let's see what, what's happening on X because uh, people are having real conversations as far as this, um, you know, <laughs> is, is concerned. So 2028 is around the corner. Some people are saying we may not reach 2028, considering the ills that are in our society. We may have to have a dialogue and have a conversation. We also have SADC that is coming up uh, towards the end of this year. I just hope they may sit our people down so that we can have a conversation. Honestly, I hope they can sit our people down because we, we need to start having conversations that are very serious, it's, 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 it is really important for us to converse so that we, we all build a Zimbabwe that we want. I also want to send some shout out because Zimbabweans are really working tirelessly. On X, there's always conversations. As far as this, the, you know, the, the elections are concerned, our society, the future, where we are going, it's so, so important. Um, you know, we, we can't afford to, you know, to keep 
you know, loitering on, on the same spot. This has been happening for decades, and it, uh, it, it has to stop. It has to stop. Like the president said that we are the people. We are the Zimbabweans. We pray for families. We, the people. Um, so we, we take him by his words and we make sure that we implement them. So you and I, we should uh, come together and make sure that at least we protect the legacy that the president talked about. We are the Zimbabweans. And we are the people. We should all come together and make sure we do it. Do whatever you can from wherever you are. You don't have to wait for a group, you know, start where you are, little by little, from families, from your homes, sitting around with your children, start instilling morals. I saw people who have been, um, you know, um, today, they, you know, through the armies of the president, women were also been released from prison as well. I heard people talking about them taking drugs and it's sad how, you know, what has been happening in our society. But again, I, all I can say is we need to start having conversations from home. Let's not wait for the church because the church is too far. You wouldn't be there on a Sunday. Let's start from home. Let's have conversation around the table and really speak, you know, with one another and see how we can be able to fix the Zimbabwe and build a Zimbabwe that we all want. You know, as we are heading towards the freedom we have been crying for, it's coming. The freedom is around the corner. It's time for us to celebrate the freedom is coming. You know, it is coming once again, I repeat, the freedom is coming. It's around the corner. There's quite a lot of people who have been complaining about what happened yesterday. People went home hungry. Um, again, very heartbreaking. I don't know if you guys have been seeing videos circulating again on uh, on X. Let's take a listen to some of the people who attended the independence. Ah, uh, Okay, so what they're alleging is that someone actually died. Someone died yesterday fighting for Melenu. Again, what I'm keep on saying, this can be. Someone died, died. Jesus Christ. People are dying fighting for Melanie. That's how suffering our people are. And honestly, we must all come together and make sure we find a solution. I saw a little sweetie baby yesterday that was seeking again for medical attention, asking for help. They could not afford about 270 US dollars to take him to the hospital. And my heart was broken seeing this little boy. And I say, God, man. And you win. And you win when we, no, guys, we, we can do better. So let's hear people that have been, uh, you know, released from prison and some of the things that they are saying. Take a listen. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Please go. Yeah, we can <laughs> 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 Sakananda Kukunu, 
madrags are waiting to say when they are who is trying to tell you that they are waiting to say 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 that they are waiting da garisa anguva ya karebe sana sana madrags ya ya I've realized that I can live without those drugs. Yes. Tuna wana wapele kwa jinsi baadhi kuchema kutoa nini kwa wajua jema drugs. Baadhi wana tena kutoa jinsi baadhi wana chetenga. Iwe wamani kuku chetenga madrags ya wai wana. Eh inene ndi chini pande ndai wa angu mna nusu shandi ra. Saka ndipo pande wana Maria chetu ya madrags. Dene chini 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 ndoa kuku rizira wapele kwa nini wana wao wapu kutoa madrags pande. Deche kuti. Mind wana wenyu company ya wanu tamba na ayo. You should mind the company that they keep. Because chungo zacho zuno vane pie press. Ano gono ngea sina maari asi. Ani nga chisha ni sama drugs. Ni kuda kwe shangwa rizu zacho zine nge zine ma drugs. Ani nga chitamba na azu hiko. Saka ndi bautu wa bere kwa ruku nze uko. Mutari sise iso zoso pa wana wenyu. Kwa wama drugs ya kwa wana wenyu. Chino zi watane mastaka siya na siya. Ine waiko lao. Eee inini ma drugs ya ndaisha ni sa anu nzi kokeni. Yes, that's very true. Cocaine is very expensive. There have been my problems. I want to know what I want now. They put away things. We must not put it down. Down this now put on. We stop on drugs. We are not dying. That all. That's all. Ah, my problems. And I can't say now. We are not dying. We are not dying. We are not dying. I'm just going to mention a few. Um, they suffer from memory loss. Sometimes I would forget. Uh, so important and they find out we are they eat again my hallucinations and those who are in me so and they send the cooking what do you want to say to your mother but you must sure my mm -hmm. shed tears that's very true um yeah, it's very sad honestly you can hear young kids are you know talking about how they've been taking drugs but I've been asking a question, why is this so difficult? Because, shout out, the police in Zimbabwe is known. They're like top of the range in terms of, in terms of uh, a crime. They don't, they don't mess up with criminals. That is known, except when politicians are doing their dead work and they're kind of robbing the police. They, police in Zimbabwe are known for doing their work. They are very good. My question is, why can't they crack down on drug lords? Why is this so difficult for them to crack down on drug lords? Because I'm in Zimbabwe and drugs. I'm shocked. When I hear about all these things of the young people are suffering with drug addiction, I'm like Zimbabwe, of all the countries. But some people are saying it was tragic, it was intentional to ruin the lives of the young people. But it is heartbreaking to hear. But again, like I said, start from your homes. Because if you have children out there, give me a while, start from your homes. Around the table, if you're sitting on the floor, start there teaching your children the principles and morals. Teach them about God. It works. It really does. You, if, if you think I, I lie, then wait until you have a drug addict in your house. That's when you see that's hell on earth. It's hell on earth. I've seen families like that. It, hey, it's sad to watch because your child is hooked. She, he or she doesn't know what to do. I met a family that said to me, we chose my husband and I to say the child must go to prison. You also remember last time when you saw Temba Mliswa, he let, he let his daughter you know, go to prison. Why? Because he knew that in prison, at least they are able to say no drugs there. They would clean them through, you know, you want to suffer, no drugs coming here. Sometimes we have to do what's right, guys, to fix this country. Track down drug lords. Look them up. There's no, anyway, there's no, uh, uh, you know, death sentence anymore. Those ones, they deserve to a death penalty. Because you know why? They destroy lives. Giving a child drugs is like killing them. Because you're ruining their brain. They are no longer think for themselves, but the devil gives them instructions. That's why they steal, they kill, they do any wrong thing you can ever name. Because they've lost control of their destiny. So any person who is behind drug, drug pushing should be given a very heavy sentence, even life in prison. Since we no longer have uh, execution, life in prison. 
Uh, it, it, this is a serious issue. That's why I can't wait for a new Zimbabwe. That people are going to be very strict. Some guys out there, things are going to be very ugly for them in the future. I'm just saying. Stop evil. Stop selling drugs to the kids. Let the kids be kids. You know, I know that that's how you guys make money. But is it worth it? Why you see you ruining lives? They can't study. You know, it's not, it's not fair. It's really not fair. Please. These kids are suffering. Drug addiction is bad. I've heard that some of the kids are literally burning their intestines. Like this bronco, whatever you're talking about. I had kids uh, are dying inside. The, like, why are you doing what you're doing? This nation is, yeah. And you're going to hear them saying, oh, but every country is suffering with it. Uh, 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 uh. Zimbabwe is not like that. That's why we're finding it weird. Because Zimbabwe has always been known being this. We, we knew that we're such a very humble people. Hardworking, you know, family oriented, you know. But because of you, you, the evil politicians, you ruined lives. And for almost everyone, you've crossed borders. Everyone is suffering because of evil politicians. And that has to stop. It really has to stop. And I pray for her. I'm, I'm glad that she's clean now. She says she's no longer going to touch any cocaine. She's going to live her life and do the right thing. And I bless her. And I pray for her. And I'm sure most of these girls and the young people who are out of prison now, I pray that they're going to have their life changed and begin to focus on fulfilling purpose. It is hurtful. It is hurtful. And I pray that the church will start taking this issue very seriously. That's all the church also, you know, has been messed up by some liars so that's why it's a bit difficult but anywho thank you so much guys for coming through uh start from your homes pray for your family members teach them about god teach them about jesus it's, it's real jesus serves you know it's not a religious thing it's for real he serves <laughs> i'm telling you the truth you will love jesus than to see your kids being drug addiction, drug addicts. <laughs> you don't want that. Don't seek for Jesus when it's too late. Okay, don't. I love you all. May God bless you and may God bless Zimbabwe. Thank you all for coming through. I love you all. I love you so much. Bless you.